How are you ladies doing this morning? I hope you're all doing wonderful. If this is your very first time here, then welcome. My name is Dr. Michelle, and if you're returning, welcome back. Thank you for joining me again. Now, before we begin, I wanna first start off by saying thank you so much to every single one of you ladies that are here. We've now reached 150,000 subscribers. Our family is growing, and I'm so grateful and elated. And I just wanna say thank you for watching my content, for sharing my content, for the beautiful comments that you leave me. They, oh, they touch me so much. Thank you so much for all the emails, all of the direct messages, the reviews that you leave on my podcast. All of it is so uplifting to me and truly does bless and help me. I just wanna say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So in today's video, I want us to talk about gifts. As a woman, we are natural receivers. We are born to receive. Receive love, receive gifts, receive compliments, receive emotional support, receive financial support, receive everything good. And as women, we have the ability to receive and to make everything better. Biologically, we receive and incubate and we give life. And we do it in many other ways as well. That's why you hear things like, a woman makes a house into a home. We turn a house into a home, not just by decorating it and putting candles all over the place and making it smell beautiful. We make it a home because we are there. Our presence makes it a home. Our loving and kind and compassionate nature is what makes a house warm, is what makes everyone in the house comfortable. And as a woman, this is your power. So what that means is that you as a woman should be ready to receive every single day compliments, help, love, everything. Now, I remember last year, my fiance took me on a trip for my birthday. He wanted to give me a gift. So he surprised me and took me to Las Vegas and took me to a racetrack. Now, he's a really big thrill seeker. I am not. But every now and then, I'll do something a little out of the box. And we went to this racetrack where they had these beautiful, fast cars. And I was able to pick whichever car I wanted. I picked a Lamborghini. <laughs> And I was supposed to drive it around the racetrack as fast as I could. Now, I remember being really scared. So I get into the car and the instructor is next to me and he's like, look, I'm gonna guide you all the way through, but I want you to step on that baby and go as fast as you can. And I believe that car went up to 400 miles per hour. Now, my car at home only goes up to 200. And of course, I'm not doing 200. So I've never even been in a car this fast. So I get in the car and I'm, I'm driving and he's looking at me like, <laughs> for real, like you need to step on it. So I'm trying to drive as fast as I can and he's looking at me like, this is not fast. You can go faster, you have the ability. This is not the freeway, go fast. And I couldn't go fast, I couldn't go fast. I was too scared. So later he and I and my fiance got into another car where he drove it. And as a professional driver, professional racer, he stepped on that thing and we were going crazy fast. We were going in circles and he drove that thing with speed and confidence. And he had the ability to let loose and just drive. And I thought, how come I couldn't do that? How come I couldn't just step on it? I knew I was safe. Why couldn't I do it? So that situation reminded me of a speech that one of my mentors, the late Dr. Miles Monroe, talked about. In America, we have cars for sale, and these cars go up to about 180 to 200 miles per hour. The average car for the average person can go about 200. And they sell us these cars, and a lot of times, mostly men, when they buy a car and they find out it can go really fast, they get super excited. But what's interesting is that these cars are designed to go so fast, yet our speed limits are 80 miles per hour, 60 miles per hour, the max I've ever seen, 90 miles per hour, and that's it. You're not allowed to go faster than that. So then why would they make the car so fast? 
Why would they build something into a system, sell it to you, and then tell you that you can't do it? Why would they do that to you? That is something to really think about. Why would they limit your potential? So I want you to think about this. Just imagine, you, you my dear, you watching this, you. Just imagine that you really needed internet connection and you didn't have any at home. You could not afford Wi-Fi. You did not have a cell phone or any device to access the internet. And you really needed it for everything that you're doing, your job, your personal life, you needed internet connection. And so every single day, you walk miles to the library so that you can send out emails, check your work status, do all these things that you can't do at home because you don't have a computer. So you put yourself through this stress every single day. And then one day, out of nowhere, someone comes to your house and delivers an iPad to you. You take it, you kind of take it out the box, you're like, oh, this is pretty, this is nice. But you have no idea what it is because you've never seen an iPad before. You don't know what you have in your hand. So you take the iPad, you put it on your table in the kitchen and you just go about your day. And day after day, the iPad just sits there on your table. So let's say one morning you wake up and you have your jelly donut for breakfast and your iced coffee and you look around and you realize you don't have anything to put the donut and the coffee on. All of your dishes are dirty, you can't find your tray, so you see the iPad. You take the iPad, you put your iced coffee on it, you put your jelly donut on it, you sit in front of the TV and you watch your show. As you're watching the show and picking up that glass and sitting it back down on your iPad, all of the water is kind of melting from the iced coffee all over the iPad, jellies all over the screen, and you don't know, so you know, you just keep on eating and keep on chilling. So maybe one day your friends come over and they see the iPad sitting there and they're like, oh, can I uh, roll my blood on it, please? And you're like, oh, sure. So they're sitting there rolling their weed all over your iPad. They're sitting their drinks on it. They're putting their cheese and their crackers on it. I mean, it's a tray. They're just using whatever is available to them, right? And then once they leave, you take the iPad and you just run it under some water to get everything off of it. And you just set it into the dish rack with all the dishes. Now, the next morning, as you are taking out the dishes from the dish rack, you accidentally hit a button and the iPad turns on. You're like, what, what is this? You don't know what it is, but now you know it's not a tray, it's not a plate. It's not just some beautiful item sitting there. Like there's something that it can do. It has a function. So you press a couple buttons and you kind of see if it works, but you don't really know how to use it because you don't know what it is. This is an example of what most of us are doing with our lives. We do not know that we were created by a creator for a purpose and a function. And we have everything we need inside of us. All of the gifts that we need to be able to do whatever we need to do are programmed inside of us. You were born for a reason. You were born for a reason and with a purpose. Everyone was. Not just one person because they're very smart or very beautiful or very driven. Everyone has a purpose and everyone was born with a gift. God created everything in nature for a purpose. There's nothing on this planet that does not have a purpose in terms of God created things. Nothing was made just to be beautiful. Nothing was made just for people to look at. Even flowers have a purpose. Their colors have a purpose for insects. Everything that God designed on this planet was made for a purpose. And you, my dear, are the highest form of creation. You are God's most prized creation and you were definitely given a purpose. When you look at nature, you realize that there are gifts everywhere. When you look at a seed, it is not just a seed, it is a tree. A seed is really a tree once it's been planted and watered. It's not just a seed, there's a gift in it. 
the tree produces fruit. So the tree wasn't just a gift, not just for the oxygen, it's also to produce the fruit, which is also a gift. And in the fruit, there might even be more seeds to produce more gifts. Everything has a gift in it. You, my dear, have a gift inside of you that you probably haven't even opened. You probably think that you don't have one or it's not there, but it is. And that gift is whatever has been nudging at you your entire life. We live in a world that wants us to forget about our gifts and not even have enough time to think about this. Our world has us rushing to work, stressed out to make money. They try to keep us in a very low vibrational state by throwing things in the news that are gonna scare you and making you feel afraid all the time. They shove drugs and alcohol in your face constantly to make you only want to get high and get drunk and sleep with people all the time because they make you think that that's the only thing that makes life fun. And they try to distract you from ever reaching your potential. And they try to limit you and make you think you can't do it. They try to make you scared. Just like when I was on that racetrack and I had the freedom. I had it, but I couldn't do it because I was programmed that I can't drive past 60 miles per hour. I was too scared, even though I was safe. And the unfortunate thing is if you don't know your gift, then you're more likely to ruin it. You're more likely to ruin yourselves and to do things that are gonna hurt you because you don't know what you are. If you knew that that iPad was everything you've been looking for, it was your connection to the internet that was programmed into the iPad, someone was paying for internet service right there in front of you, you wouldn't have been putting your drinks on it, you wouldn't have been putting your food on it, you wouldn't be rinsing it underwater because you would not wanna damage it you would be very careful with how you treat it. And the thing is, most of the time, we are operating in a way where we're not connecting with our creator. Every product that you get comes with instructions. Whoever designed that product wants you to know how to operate it so that it works, or else why would they make it? They made it to work, you bought it to work. So they wanna make sure you know how to use everything and how to make it work in the most optimal way. So they give you instructions. We also have instructions and we, we don't ever open the manual. It took me 32 years to open my manual. 32 years. Now, I'm the granddaughter of a bishop. My grandmother was one of the most incredible women in the world. And I took 32 years to open my manual. I went to church every Sunday. Okay, but I did not know that this was what I needed to know in order to operate myself optimally. And same thing goes with that iPad. You can have the iPad, you can turn it on and you can play around with it. But you won't really know how to work it and who to go to when it breaks if you haven't opened up the manual. And unfortunately, we're not doing that. We're operating like we're just people. We're not operating like we are a combination of our body, our mind, and our spirit. We are leaving the spirit side out. And that's why so many of us are just so down and depressed. We don't know that we have gifts inside of us. Many people will think that they don't have gifts, but it's not because you don't know, it's because you're not acknowledging it. Your gift is something that you are naturally good at. It's something that you enjoy doing and you could do it all day, every day. It's something that you can make a career out of because people will need it. Your gift is not for you. It sounds like it's for you because it's a gift, but it's a gift for us. It's in you, but it's for us. And you are robbing us as a world when you don't give it. And a lot of us as children, like we have these gifts and we have these aspirations and dreams and from a very young age, we know what we wanna do. And then our parents and society tells us, nope, can't do that. You, <laughs> you can't do that. Or you won't make money doing that, come on now. And that's unfortunate. Now me personally, 
I went to school and I, you know, have a career as a psychologist, but that's not where I can fully use my gifts. Yes, I can use my gifts a little bit within my job, but very limited. My job is actually more of me telling people what's wrong with them, which goes completely against my nature. I mean, literally, it is the opposite of my nature to tell people what is wrong with them and give them labels and, you know, recommend medication like that. All of that is completely against my nature, completely outside of my gifts. I can still utilize some of my gifts in my job, but that's not where I can shine. So I did what I had to do, you know, I had to listen to my parents and I understand the value of everything that they asked me to do and I did it, but I still am here by choice because this is where I can utilize my gifts. And I have faith that eventually God will move me out of that position to be able to help me maximize my gifts. But don't ignore it. If you have something that people say you're so good at and you know you are, it comes naturally to you, that is your gift. If there's something that you knew you wanted to be at a very young age and you abandoned it because you just felt, mm, I don't know how I'm going to get a job doing that, then that is where you're supposed to probably be. Whatever your purpose is, is something that's going to bother you your entire life. It's gonna pull at you and pull at you and pull at you because your creator put it inside of you so that it could bother you, so that you could do it. And most of us never do it. And we end up spending our entire lives doing something else that's usually making us miserable. Some of us are living within our gifts. Some of us have figured it out. Some of us have rebelled. Some of us have fully dived into it, but the majority of us have not. And that's why we're so sad. That's why we're so unfulfilled. That's why we're so miserable, because we know this is not what we're supposed to be doing. And God has a really interesting way of having us reflect. This time right now, this pandemic, this season is a perfect time for you to reflect on your gifts. Opening up that box, turning that thing on, reading your manual, and figuring out how to work it. You have to be brave and you have to start somewhere, my love. I know that I was not born to collect a bunch of degrees and have sex with sexy men. I can use all of those experiences to help me and help me to channel my gift and use my gift appropriately. I can. You can use anything for good, anything. All the mistakes and choices and decisions, everything you've done in your life, it's not a problem. It's fine as long as you realize that's not why you're here and you reel it all back in and figure out how you can now use all of those experiences and all of the things that you were programmed with to make your life blossom. And then you will be happy. You would have given yourself the best gift you can ever, ever imagine. And you will be giving us the best gift that we could ever ask for. So that's what I want you to do, honey. I want you to think about this. What are your gifts? What do you want to do? What would you do if money was not an obstacle? If you didn't ever have to worry about money ever again, what would you be doing? Think about it, meditate on it, pray about it, and then start going towards it. It doesn't matter what you're already doing, keep doing that. And then do what you're designed to do at the same time until you can fully do it. I truly hope that this video was helpful to you ladies. I hope that something I said resonated with you, sparked a fire inside of you. I truly hope that today you start thinking about this. I would love for you to leave me a comment and tell me what you think your gift is or what you think you should really be doing. And I also want you to share this video with at least one other woman that you care about so that they can start thinking about their purpose and their gifts. And they can also encourage you to think about yours. And they can also help you to start thinking about the things that you're great at, the things that come naturally to you. Because sometimes other people might have to tell you because you think it's so normal, so natural, that you don't even think it's your gift. 
and that's the best kind. So talk to people about this, share this video with them. Make sure that if you have children, you're paying attention to their gifts, you're not ignoring it, and you're making sure that they develop it and you teach them that this is what they need to be going for. In addition to whatever else you think needs to sustain them, this is something they should never neglect. And by encouraging that, you would have given them the best gift you could ever give them as a parent. I thank you ladies so much for being here. I thank you for all of your encouraging words and your love. I love you so much. And I'm so excited about what you're going to do with your life. Make sure that you follow my page on Instagram at a feminine impression for more feminine content. And you can also follow my personal Instagram, Ghana underscore goddess. Also, be sure to visit my podcast, A Feminine Impression. And I hope to see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day. Peace, love, and light.